This is the EUI Bike K6 Pro. Wait, that's not my intro. What's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be checking out the EUI Bike K6 Pro. And I'm gonna share with you guys this features, the specs, and then we're gonna go take this thing for a ride and uh, we're just gonna have a good time, aren't we? So buckle up, guys, let's get started. I guess you'd actually put on a helmet, not buckle up, but you get the point, right? Anyways, come on, let's get right into it. Currently, this bike sells for $12.99. It has some pretty good components on it. It's available in three color options. It comes in a dark gray, a camo green, and what I believe to be the correct color option, as seen here, the camo gold. It has two-tone Chow Yang tires that are 20 by four inch. It has a 1,000 watt geared hub motor, 25 amp hour, 48 volt battery. So this has a pretty big 1200 watt hour battery, which I think is really nice. This bike comes with a two amp charger from a dead battery to a full charge can take up to 12 and a half hours. 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. These are Logan branded disc brakes. And uh, I can tell you these uh, handles feel really nice. It's dual suspension, it has HLT 100 rear shock. I'm guessing it doesn't offer very much uh, travel there. Has a dual crown front fork. Has your compression settings here on the right and uh, preload on the left. Has these plastic fenders front and rear. And I've said this before, I like the plastic fenders better than metal because uh, they don't make as much noise. It has a rear rack. This bike is weighted at a weight capacity of 400 pounds. EUI bike, or as I like to call them, OI bike. It has a magnesium alloy frame. And looking at this here, I can't tell if this is paint or if this is some sort of wrap or what, but it's really nice looking. Oi Bike claims uh, this will fit a rider from 5'7 to 6'5. This has an eight speed drivetrain. This is one of the first e-bikes I've reviewed that doesn't have that god awful seven speed shifter that you see on pretty much every single e-bike. This has a nice Shimano eight speed trigger shifter, an Altus rear derailleur. Pedals on this bike also fold as well, which is pretty neat has this really nice front headlight. Anytime the bike is powered on, it's gonna have the running lights on at all times. The rear tail light on this bike is separate. So it has its own battery power, which means you have to turn it on and off manually. And it doesn't activate when you press the brakes. So let's go over here to the cockpit. Turn on the bike, you wanna hold down this power button here. You see the display pop on. As soon as you turn on the bike, the front headlight, or the running lights turn on on this bike. So the running lights are on at all times. Your display offers you pretty basic information. Your power meter, pedal assist level, which can be toggled through the up and down buttons here. You can turn the headlight on and off by pressing the power, the headlight button here. If you press information, it gives you your tripometer, odometer, and time, and max speed. So if you just press through that and it toggles through the different uh, memory settings. Your speedometer, it's a pretty basic display, but it gives you the information you need. It has a half twist throttle. Here you have your Logan hydraulic disc brake handles. These feel pretty nice. And your Shimano eight speed trigger shifter. In order to fold the bike, what you do is you get this little screw handle here, undo it, and then the bike simply folds in half. It's a bit awkward, we'll see. I'm gonna try and throw this in the back seat of my truck and see if this actually saves space. And then when you're done, fold it back out and tighten this down. So what do you say guys? Let's go outside and give this thing a test ride. We'll see you out there. All right guys, we are out on the K6 Pro and uh, I have to say the first thing I've noticed is this seat has a weird squishiness to it. Let me see if I can show you. The frame of the seat goes down the middle, but on the sides of it, it kind of has this give to it. So when you're riding, you're kind of like squirming around. The seat's comfortable, but it gives you this weird feeling of uh, squirming around on the seat. So honestly, first thing I would probably do is swap this seat out, but you might give this a try and see if you like it. This is a cadence sensor bike, and let's explain how these pedal assist levels work. So pedal assist one, it's gonna go up to about 10 miles an hour, I think. Yeah, 10 miles an hour it stops. Pedal assist two, it's gonna give you assistance up to 16. Pedal assist three. Ooh, pedal assist three is still going. Looks like it's cutting off about 21. See how far we can go in pedal assist four. How fast we can go.
Okay, pedal assist four goes up to 25, and pedal assist five is gonna go all the way up to max speed, which looks to be about 28. There can be quite a discrepancy in how responsive these cadence sensors are, and this one's not bad. Kicks in fairly quick. The throttle gives you a nice steady deliverance of power, so it doesn't just blow you away off the line. <laughs> First impressions on the suspension here is the front fork is pretty plush. It gives a good amount of good amount of travel on it. I don't know what it's rated at, but the rear uh, there's not much travel on the rear. So on the rear, it feels more like it just takes the edge off of any bump you're going to hit, but there's not much there's not much travel there to it. So if you look at it. I mean, there's not physically enough room for this shock to provide much travel, but it's better than a hardtail. All sorts of new graffiti here today. This has an upgraded derailleur, and it's not the Shimano tourney that almost all these bikes has, and it has this nice trigger shifter here. Feels nice and firm, feels like a Decent quality materials. It's not top of the line by any means, but it's uh, it's nice. This is a good shifter. But guys, I have to say, in my time riding this bike so far, I have to say the star of the show here are these Logan hydraulic brakes. These suckers are strong. No. I don't know if it's the combination of this bike being 20 inch tires and maybe the smaller form factor or what, but this has no problems locking these brakes up. Stopping power is not an issue on this bike. And I really like the way these, uh, the handles feel. It's a really nice feeling handle. <laughs> For a folding bike, this bike gives you the ability to really just go in a lot of different places. I wouldn't take this on any hardcore trail riding, that's for sure. But uh, you can go on trails, fire roads, gravel, uh, moderately rough, rough terrain. Let's go see. Let's go ahead and see how it does with the uh, rocks of the railroad tracks up here. This is also my first time riding a 20 by four inch fat tire bike. And so far I have to say, it feels pretty good. It's more zippy. You can definitely zip it around more. Let's see how it does over these rocks here. Well, it is a four inch wide tire. Oh yeah. It's not quite as easy as the 26 by four inch, but it does a good enough job. I'm really liking the form factor on this bike. I like that it's not as big and bulky as the 26 by four inch bikes I've ridden. And uh, the folding, although I don't know how realistic or how much you'd really plan on folding this bike it does come in handy i was able to fold it up and put it into the back seat of my truck so i folded my seats up but it's a bit awkward because when you fold it it doesn't lock into the folding position. So it's still kind of like hinges back and forth. But it's nice that you can fold it up. So even if you just want to store this bike, it'll take up less of a footprint. So I've watched another review on this bike and the guy pointed out, and that reviewer pointed out that this bike has a tendency to have the chain come off the sprocket. And I have noticed that happen a few times now. So here. So have to put the chain back on. It's not hard to do, but you do get your hands dirty. It makes me wonder if possibly removing a couple links in this chain to slacken that up a little bit would help alleviate that problem. But this bike does have a tendency to pop that chain off the sprocket. I've noticed that happen three or four times, and this is what I'm saying. Give you an idea of what that suspension looks like. You can see in the rear, there's not an incredible amount of uh, travel on the rear. It does what it's supposed to do. I mean, it takes the initial jolt out of impacts, but look at the front here. Now the front, quite a bit of movement there. 
I've tuned this in a little bit, oh, compression's open and put the preload to my weight settings. So for a folding bike, I'd have to say this bike suspension is adequate for what this bike is. I know looks are subjective, but I have to say this camo gold color with the brown sidewalls on the tires, I think this is a really nice looking bike. At first, maybe uh, I like it. I really think the colors complement each other. I like the way this bike looks a lot. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. All right, guys, I have this seat in a fairly low position here uh, where my legs aren't really locking out, totally ergonomic. But I just wanted to show you, I'm six foot two, and I think this bike is comfortable enough to pedal for a reasonable amount of distance. Of course, I wouldn't be competing in the Tour de France on this bike, but let's be realistic, you know, none of us are. See if I can demonstrate to you guys just how good these brakes work. I'm doing 20 miles an hour right now. And these brakes are surprisingly very strong. And for a folding bike, I'm really satisfied with the quality of components that comes on this bike, especially at this price point. Back on some streets now. And uh, this bike is fairly quick. It's definitely not the fastest bike I've ridden. To me, in my opinion, this bike likes to cruise right around 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour is a good, comfortable cruising point on this bike. But let's see how fast we can go on just throttle. And guys, keep in mind, I am uh, 245 pounds, so I am definitely not the lightest rider out there. 22, 23, 24. So with me on this bike, it, might, it can go about 24 on throttle only. What I like about this bike so far is it's smooth. If you've ridden a few of these bikes, you'll notice that some of them are more of a jerky experience. The kind of, uh, the way the power kicks in and out, well, you can definitely feel it. This bike is definitely has a smooth, more refined feel to how they uh, program the controller, that's for sure. Awkward place to stop. Just get to stare right at this guy until he moves. And we're back on the bike trails. You can see a bit of that maneuverability I was talking about with the 20 by four inch tires. And since this is a full suspension bike, guys, we're not taking the normal bike trail. We're gonna take this little side trail here, aren't we? Now, I think the folding feature is neat on this bike. And in order to fold it, you undo this little hatch here. But what I have noticed is I got this really tight by hand and it kept coming loose. And I watched a couple other reviews and people also mentioned the same thing. So what I did is I got this wrench. I got this wrench on there and I really cranked this thing down. And since then it stayed put. So if you're gonna be riding this thing around, don't rely on just your hand. And if you do, constantly check it because it was coming loose on me. Every couple miles, it was getting looser and looser. So the last thing you wanna do is be riding this bike around and have that hinge come undone and have the bike fold on you while you're riding. So tighten it by with a wrench or be diligent in checking how tight that is. You've been warned. Look at this. We're just trail brazen on the EUI bike K6 Pro. Did you ever thought you could do things like this with a folding bike? I mean, did you ever even know what a folding bike was, to be honest? Look at this. Pretty cool, huh, guys? So while this suspension is not going to go win any races at Red Bull Rampage, it's going to be enough to do uh, trails like this. That and the combination with these 20 by 4 inch fat tires, it's going to give you the ability to go to most places. You know, actually probably going to give you the ability to go to places you probably shouldn't, to be honest. All right, guys, here we are at the test hill. Going to go all the way down to the lowest gear because we're going to need it. And, you know, I'm just going to shoot right up to pedal assist five. No resistance yet, but you can see here now it's starting to get steep. I can feel resistance, but we're still doing it. We're still making headway here. Oh yeah, it's doable. I'm putting it in a little effort though. It's not doing it for me. Hello. It's not going to do it on throttle, that's for sure. Oh yeah. This bike's not going to be the strongest climber out of the bunch, but you know what? It's going to get you up hills that I'm telling you, you wouldn't want to do on a normal bike, on an acoustic bike. And we're up. 
All right, that was nice. So this is not the strongest bike. This is a thousand watt motor. Representative EUI bike claim this is a 25 amp controller. So that means a total of about 1200 watts. This is a moderately powerful bike and especially for the form factor it's in, I feel this has an appropriate amount of power. Excuse me, ladies. What do you think of the EUI bike K6 Pro? Yeah, I know, pretty nice, right? Drop it in. <laughs> There you guys have it. This is the EUI bike K6 Pro. Some things I really like about this bike, I like the 48 volt, 25 amp hour battery. It's gonna give you plenty of range. It's got a thousand watt motor. So this bike's moderately powerful enough for this form factor. It's got some upgraded components, the Altus derailleur, eight speed cassette, this nice trigger shifter. These brakes are some of the best brakes I've ever felt on an e-bike. And not to mention this awesome looking magnesium alloy frame and the Chow Yang two-tone tires. Some things I wasn't crazy about with this bike, um, the folding mechanism can be kind of sketchy, so you have to make sure you keep this thing super tight. Once I tighten it with a wrench, it hasn't come loose on me, but if you're gonna use your hand, be aware that this thing does like to come loose. The seat, uh, I would definitely swap out the seat first thing. The rear tail light here, I wish this bike had an integrated tail light. For as well as everything else is integrated on this bike, having to manually turn on and off this little tail light here it's just, I just wish it was better. But for $1,299, I think this bike is a great value. If you're interested in buying one, you can use the link in the description of this video. Doing so does help support the channel, and I do appreciate it. So guys, this has been the EUI Bike K6 Pro. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Take care.